Robert Shepherd's ill today, along with Eleanor Rees, they've been smashed by uh, rumble tummies or something akin. So Zoe Scolding, very kindly, is going to read their collaborative piece uh, aloud. So a uh, round of applause for Zoe Scolding. to read um, something I've been working on with, uh, with Robert Shepherd, who um, has had an interest uh, recently in, uh, in the work of a certain René van Balkenburg, um, who is a Belgian poet that he has been translating. Um, no, he hasn't been. He's been working with the translators. The whole thing is a little bit hazy. But anyway, um, whether Robert Shepherd really exists or René van Valkenburg really exists, I think I have to leave for you to decide. What I have here um, is uh, a couple of poems by a Turkish Cypriot poet called Gurkan Arnavut. Um, and he lives in the, um, in the Greek part of Cyprus. He's had a very difficult time recently. Um, and we started working on his poem, um, you know, really before um, all of the recent traumas erupted, and um, it's been somewhat distressing to see what, what poetry can do to a country's economy. Um, but anyway, so this Gurkhan Arnavut, you can find out more about him on um, the European, um, no, I've forgotten the name, uh -uh. The European something imaginary authors. I'm supposed to write this down beforehand. Oh. Imaginary authors, and the middle name is just escaped me. But anyway, it's it, it, uh, it'll come back to me by the end. So there's a whole list of imaginary authors, and um, Gurkhan on the is, is one of them that we've been working on. And um, I think I won't say any more than that. But you can see this as somebody who's living, I suppose, between between cultures. In ways. I think I probably have to make just a small announcement at the end. Stavros Monopoulos um, is the Icelandic hero of Bragi Olafsson's novel The Ambassador, who checks into a hotel in Lithuania to escape a poetry festival where he'll be outed as a plagiarist under the name Stavros Monopoulos. Okay, so here are two poems by Gurkhan Arnavut. Not just the suitors, their lovers too, the bad maids strung up along a cable, epic simile, like birds caught in a net in a thicket till their legs stopped, wombs dropped. Like civilization, my compatriot Aphrodite, born from a cut. We're still on the line where the page thickens towards forgetting, a starfish city <coughs> spilt by split foam washes at the edges. When carrying this graft of atrocity and other aphrodisiacs, we're aphotic with despair, aphonous with grief, a writhing tongue lashing ourselves to the mast, listening to the keels creak, wheels squeak, sails frap, and swooning in the void where the voices should be. Pop songs from minarets, the channel switches <coughs> mid-current in saturated waves, braced notes, the call to prayer never so loud as in its tuning out. Whose love comes through the cables? In what frequencies on the wave spectrum jostling for decibel music? With what frequency do trim voices bleed into prime time? Do they scissor the price of the Euro decision for the celestial static haircut of Greek debt? No doubt the other walks beside me and the other's other slices through the shadows, each step cutting through the space between heartbeats, in constant deficit, love owed. No ownership is not barbaric, no love not debt, no cable of yellow electric bulbs stretched across the carnival, not darkened by smoke haze. Dimmed in hermaphroditic indifference, desire dissolved in equity, the other becomes the same in toxic exchanges of war graves, peace claims. From hand to hand, my trembling right becomes tangential to the act. Who am I if not this beginning on a table where different worlds come into view? Do-it-yourself death mask beyond the glass of tea, 
not in the room but part of it. Half of me slips from the stool. The poem shatters and its worlds flatten on the fifth wall of space-time demands. She drops the headscarf, leaving the table. Its moment won't return, though she will, to find it neatly folded, double surface. In the soft threads of another life, we cover and uncover the details that will never hold together, each one unravelling its own past. Yes, this means you. Or the cat wandering into no man's land, sinewy with insinuation, her soft pads assimilating human ground. Hot towel on your face at the barbers, you hear the sharpening of cut blades and hope you're muffled. I am not Stavros Monopolis, will save you. <coughs> well, then, um, in order to, um, I'm not really sure how to introduce this, but um, it, in order to get the, uh, the translation of any. Um, and the poem writes, it's, it's the wildlife is always the, uh, the critical thing, the names of, of creatures that can go very, very wrong there. Um, so we spent quite a lot of time just looking up um, the birds of Cyprus and, um, and also Robert spent some time researching the, the hoopoo, the sound of the hoopoo, which is um, very, very lovely. It's like a sort of triple beep. Cry. And, um, uh, but of course we're, we're, we're doing that from a, from a distance, we haven't actually been to Cyprus to, uh, to work on this collaboration, though Stephen's funding gets better <laughs> next time. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so the warbler and the wheat ear are two uh, species of birds that have particular varieties in Cyprus that have evolved into their own Thing. I'm not really a bird expert, but it's, uh, they're, 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 they're Cypriot specialities apparently. But there are egrets and hoopoos in here as well. While egrets rise under my eyelids and the clock needles its way into morning, it's as if weather is all I've ever lived. When history is a flip of last year's calendar doing service again as a ladder up this year's spine, I cringe before diurnal crests, unctuous foam. While every hour is water incessantly returning, every spring a loosening of pins that hold the joints in place, where the tide turns on every bristle of my wings, tense against lover or prey, neck twisted like toilet plumbing, the blaze of scissored beak and beaded eye glides to lock my claws around the bow for waiting. Inland, the dry ground turns in on itself to warbler and wheat ear, the hoopoo's spread wing. In time, every song finds its own way through the cracked air to the cracked ear, even the hoopoo's triplets of dull barbs tracking on a green string across a screen. 23 seconds of filtered white noise behind which wings rustle with the soft rush of disappearing cash. Change is no change at all, shriek the birds disappearing into money, into the sky's indivisible walls. 